Hi, Algebra students. So I thought we would go through the 9.1 review together. Uh, I started doing this, working the problems through with you, and it just was taking too long for the video. So I'm just going to talk you through my work. So you'll notice I started at the top with a um, table of perfect squares. Remember when you're looking for um, numbers to use to simplify radicals, you want to use your, your perfect squares as factors. So let's start with number one. In number one, I um, broke this one down into the square root of four because four is a perfect square times the square root of seven. The square root of four is two, so I have two square roots of seven. Final answer. Number two, um, factors of 50 are 25 and two. 25 is a perfect square, um, so five times the square root of two is my final answer. Square root of 20 breaks down into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. The square root of 4 is 2, so 2 square roots of 5. Number 4. Um, this one says 2 times the square root of 300. So remember that 2 out front is going to get multiplied by whatever I simplify there. So um, I broke down 300 into the square root of 100 times 3. The square root of 100 is 10, and then you're, you'll multiply that 10 by 2 to get 20. So you have 20 square roots of 3. In number 5, the square root of 36 is a perfect root. That gives you 4, so you just multiply 3 and 4 to get 12. Number 6, the perfect root factor of 48 is 16. It goes in 3 times. So um, 2 times the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, and then I multiply the 4 times the 2 to get 8, so it's 8 square roots of 3. Alright, starting with number 7, we um, are looking at radicals and fractions. So remember we talked about something called rationalizing the denominator. So that's what I'm doing in number 7. Remember, it's it, you can never have a radical in your denominator. So um, here I have to multiply by the square root of 2 or the square root of 2, which means I'm really just writing an equivalent fraction. Um, up top, 3 times the square root of 2 is 3 square roots of 2, and in my denominator, the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which simplifies to 2, so thereby I've eliminated that radical from my denominator. You always want to check these whole numbers and see if they can be simplified at all, but in this case they cannot. Um, same thing for number 8, I'm just... Uh, rationalizing by multiplying by the square root of 6 over the square root of 6. So it gives me 5 square roots of 6 over 6. And I just reminded you again that this, these two give me a product of the square root of 36, which then simplifies to 6. Number 9, again, just simplifying my denominator, or sorry, rationalizing it um, by multiplying by the square root of 3 on top and bottom. So 7 times the square root of 3 is 7 square roots of 3. Now down here, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, which is 3, and then you have to do 3 times 2, which is 6, not 18. I just noticed my mistake there. So it should be 7 square root of 3 over 18, and I'm going to fix that real quick here. I have my eraser on. So this should be a 6. Good thing I'm going back over this. And again, that can't simplify. Um, so on number 10, just remember when you have a fraction underneath the radical, um, that just means you're taking the square root of the numerator and the square root of the denominator. And in this case, both of those are perfect roots, so it just simplifies to 3 sevenths. Number 11, um, you can either multiply this entire thing together first and do 20 times 15. I like to simplify first if I can. So I broke the square root of 20 into the square root of 4 times the square root of 5. And then that gives me 2 times the square root of 5. And then I can't simplify that, so, um, so I left a step out there. But what I did here is multiply the square root of 5 times 15 gives me 75. That then has a square root factor, which is 25. So the square root of 25 is 5 times 2 is 10. And then you have the square root of 3 remaining, so 10 square roots of 3. In number 12, um, here when we multiply, think about like combining or grouping your like terms. So I'm just using my uh, commutative property to do a little reorganizing here. 
So I did 2 times 5, it's 10, and then I multiply my radicals together. 6 times 3 is 18, and then I can simplify 18 into 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is 3. 3 times 10 is 30, so my final answer is 30 square roots of 2. All right, on to our next page. Same thing for number 13. Um, multiplying my coefficients, 5 times 2 is 10. 3 times 7 gives me the square root of 21, and I believe there's no perfect root factors of 21, so you're finished. For number 14, I simplified the right-hand side first. The square root of 18 simplifies to 9 times 2. The square root of 9 is 3, so now it's 10 square roots of 2 times 3 square roots of 2. So 10 times 3 gave me 30, and the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is 4. Square root of 4 is 2, and then 2 times 30 is 60. Um, so number 15, eventually we are going to have to rationalize the denominator here, but um, before doing so, notice I chose to simplify the denominator into the square root of 5 times the square root of 7. And then these cancel because the square root of 5 over the square root of 5 is 1. So I have 1 over the square root of 7. I now still have to rationalize my denominator. So my final answer is the square root of 7 over 7. All right, something new. So in this next row, we are combining by um, using addition or subtraction. So remember, this is like um, combining like terms. So like just like when you have 2x plus 4x, you get 6x. You just add the coefficients, but you keep the like variable. So same thing here with radicals. So in order to combine by adding or subtracting, I have to have exactly the same radical. So here I do. So I have 4 square roots of 2, and I'm adding 7 more square roots of 2. So all together, I just have 11 square roots of 2. And number 17, 8 square roots of 5, take away 1 square root of 5 is just 7 square roots of 5. And number 18, I simplified the square root of 12. I broke that into 4 times 3. The square root of 4 is 2. So you have 2 square roots of 3 plus 3 square roots of 3, which is now 5 square roots of 3. For number 19, um, notice I can't simplify that first term, but I can simplify the square root of 27, so I broke that down into 9 times 3. Um, square root of 9 is 3, times 2 is 6. So I have 5 square roots of 3, take away 6 square roots of 3, which is negative 1 square root of 3. Number 20, here you're using your distributive property. So you have um, square root of 2 times 1 is the square root of 2. The square root of 2 times the square root of 2 is the square root of 4, which is just 2. So it's the square root of 2 plus 2. And those cannot be combined, and you just have to leave it right like that. Number 21, same thing. Use your distributive property here. So you have the square root of 3 times the square root of 36. The square root of 36 is exactly 6, so I simplified that. Okay, a little something different in number 22. Now we're just adding on to that. So we have three terms here. I can't simplify the square root of 7 or the square root of 10, but I could simplify the square root of 28. That um, factors into 4 times 7. The square root of 4 is 2 times 2 is 4. So that's where this 4 came from. And then here I'm just combining my like terms, 6 square roots of 4 minus 4 square, sorry, 6 square roots of 7 minus 4 square roots of 7 gives me 2 square roots of 7 plus 8 square roots of 10. And I cannot go any further than that. Number 23, um, once again, these cannot be simplified, so I just multiplied them together. So I have 4 square roots of 75. I can then factor that into 25 times 3. The square root of 25 is 5. 5 times 4 is 20, so 20 square roots of 3. And then for number 24, I just multiplied these together to get the square root of 16, which is exactly 4. All right, on the home stretch, people. Um, here, um, again, I simplified my denominator. I said the square root of 27 is the same as 9 times 3. The square root of 9 is 3. So notice, again, I canceled these square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Remember, I need to keep a 1 in my numerator as a placeholder, so my answer is 1 third. I did the same thing in number 26. I simplified the denominator to, say, the square root of 8. 
times the square root of 3. These canceled, so I now have 1 over the square root of 3. Now I need to rationalize my denominator to get rid of that radical in the denominator. So it's just the square root of 3 over 3 is my final answer. Number 27, um, I simplify the square root of 48. I broke that into 16 times 3. The square root of 16 is 4. So you have the square root of 5 over 4 square roots of 3. You again have to rationalize your denominator. So I multiplied by the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So that gave me the square root of 15 in the numerator. And then down here, the square root of 3 times 3 is the square root of 9, which is just 3. And then you multiply that by the 4 to get 12. Um, number 28, remember squaring something just means you're multiplying it by itself. So I just wrote that out. And then I'm, again, combining those like terms. So I multiplied my coefficients. 2 times 2 is 4. Square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 25, which is 5. And then 4 times 5 is 20. So 20 is my final answer. Okay, 29 and 30, kind of a challenge. Um, now instead of doing square roots, we're doing cubed roots. So what you'll notice I did right here is just a little table of perfect cubes. 1 cubed is 1. 2 cubed is 8. Remember, it's 2 times 2 times 2. 3 cubed is 27. 3 times 3 times 3. So using those perfect cube factors, again, just like with squares, I'm looking for a perfect cube factor of 32. And I saw that 8 is a factor, so 8 times 4. The cubed root of 8 is 2. And then you have left over the cubed root of 4. So 2 times the cubed root of 4 is your final answer there. And then same thing for number 30. 54. Um, breaks down into 27 times 2. 27 is a perfect cube. The cubed root of 27 is 3, and you have the cubed root of 2 left over. Okay, and again, don't panic. Those were just a little bit of a stretch on what we've been doing, little challenge problems. So take your time. Um, the quiz is short tomorrow. Just look well, if you can do everything on this review, you will do perfectly fine on the quiz tomorrow. You will have as many times to take it as you need. Um, and you're going to do great. I don't have a, a problem or think you're going to have a problem with that. Um, please let me know if you have any questions or need help.